In all wars since the beginning of history, there have been men who fought twice. The first time they battled with club, sword or machine gun. The second time they had none of these weapons. Yet this by far was the greatest battle. It was fought with abiding faith and raw courage and in the end, victory was achieved. This is the story of such a group of men. To them, this film is dedicated. he was impatient. He must have aimed for my head, but he got me in the back. I was scared. I couldn't feel anything from my waist down. I thought I was dying. That's funny. That's very, very funny. I was afraid I was gonna die. Now I'm afraid I'm gonna live. Oh, you'll be walking again in a couple of months, Lieutenant Wilczek. How many months? How many months? I've lost count. But let's keep it gay. Soldier, repeat after me. The war's over now, and I'm glad I'm still half alive. I'm a lucky man.
fine way to treat a silver star. Turn the light out. Good night. get a lot of misinformation from people who ought to know better. Okay, let's summarize what we've learned. Paraplegia is the result of an injury to the spinal cord. That break in the cord causes immediate and lasting paralysis of motion and feeling in the lower body. In general, most paraplegic patients will, at various times, suffer all of the following symptoms. Pain, Muscular spasms, bed sores, paralysis of the bladder and bowels. However, all of these may and can be controlled by medical therapy, surgery, proper nutrition, physical rehabilitation, and self-care. Lastly, the question of walking. In almost every case, the word walk must be forgotten. It no longer exists. In short, most paraplegics must content themselves with life in a wheelchair. Make yourselves accept that. It'll make it a lot easier for them. I've talked a long time. Perhaps there are some questions you'd like to ask? only 19. I know. But with proper care, he may live to be 90. But, Doctor, Brock, is it? Well, this condition, there must be some cure. Paraplegia isn't a death sentence any longer. I'm happy to say that in this hospital, the mortality rate has been less than 3%. I didn't mean that. I meant the spine injury. Surely there must be some way of healing it. There must be specialists somewhere who... Madam, there is no method known to medical science for the regeneration of spinal cord tissue. None. Doctor. Uh, my husband and I, uh, we have a little girl. We've always wanted to have a large family. But now if we could just have at least one more for the child's sake, will it be possible? Well, that's difficult to say. In some cases, it is possible. However, I can't discuss your husband here. I'll be happy to meet with you whenever you say. Dr. Brown, what about the bladder and bowels? How badly are they affected? Most men find that they're capable of retraining themselves and in time achieving regularity in these functions. Any more questions? Uh, Dr. Brock. We've been married nine years. I thought my husband and I knew each other as well as anyone could. And I want to keep our marriage going. But he's so changed. He, he's different. He isn't different. He's the same man with a spinal cord injury. But oh, when I, I know right now he's unhappy, he's depressed. He feels himself totally dependent on others. He says to himself, I'm not a man any longer. I can't make a woman happy. Is it any wonder he finds it difficult to adjust to the situation? But how long will it take? Face it. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience for you and for him. But will we have anything in common now? No more and no less than you had before. Dr. Brock, if you were a woman, would you marry a paraplegic? <laughs> you might as well just ask me if I want to get married, period. And the answer to that is no. However, this young lady here is marrying one of our patients. You might check with her. Any other questions? If not, suppose we adjourn the meeting. And please feel free to consult with me whenever you have any problems, because you will. Good night.
Doctor. More questions? I'm afraid so. You have a patient here named Bud Wilczek, uh, Kenneth Wilczek. We were engaged before he went overseas, and, well, after he was hurt, he wrote and said it was all off. He's never even let me come to see him. Why don't you leave him alone? Because he doesn't really want it that way. I know he doesn't. I know why he's acting like this. I'm no fool. Besides, you made it very clear just now. Why don't you write to him? I have, naturally. He doesn't answer. I was so sure you'd help me. Don't you understand? This is the third hospital I followed him to. Yes, I understand. What do you want to do? I want to marry him. Why? Why? For the usual reasons. Do you have parents? Yes. Do they feel as you do? Why shouldn't they? Anyway, they're not engaged to him. I am. Well, what do you want me to do? You're his doctor. You could talk to him. I can't interfere in his personal life. Don't you think he needs me? Don't you think I can help him? I don't know. It takes a pretty special kind of woman in a lot of ways. Maybe I'm special. Maybe. Give me a ring in a day or two. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I will. What's his residual? Nine out, one and a half left. Good. How did that happen? Oh, we just stood around him and prayed. Well, that's nice, but let's keep working on it. The uh, patient's balance of bladder function is now good. He may proceed with all routine activity, including gym. How's the family? Fine. The little one's starting to talk. Mm, time sure flies. You said it. How are you today, Mr. Mullen? I'm still here. Oh, I see. Well, let's take a look at that closure. Hey, this looks good. I'm proud of you. Did you hear that? I heard it. What are you reading there? Nature girl meets the monster. Oh, please. Is that all you can find to do? Read those junky comic books? Do I tell you what to read? Closure of the sacral decubitus ulcer has been successful. The patient may proceed with routine, mild activity. Hopkins, what are you doing here? You aren't due back for two weeks. I know. Well, what's wrong? What happened? Nothing. Went home and I came back. But you didn't use up your month. Come on, Hoppy, what's the score? Ah, oh, my mother. She means well. They all do. But they keep telling me I'll walk again if I want to bad enough. And didn't you explain it to them? Sure. So they sit around looking at me like I'm a freak on wheels. At night, I can hear my old lady crying. Gee, I gotta live, too. Look, it took you three years to get where you are. Can't you give them three weeks? Will you try it again in a month or two? If you say so, Doc. Yep. Good morning, Mr. Fine. You look just fine today. All right, so it's not funny. I'm no Jack Benny. I'm just a plumber. How's your bladder? Oh, about ten and one. Swell. I still got that pain in the mid-thoracic region. Where? In the mid-thoracic region. He should be a doctor. The patient's bladder is now automatic and well-balanced. A tailor brace would correct his back difficulties, but it's suggested that he go to the gym more frequently and regularly. Have you decided what you're going to do when you leave? Sure. Sell shoelaces. Oh, fine, Mr. Fine. Another Leo Doolin. That's all we need in this ward. I heard that, Dr. Brock. Hey, Norm, you remember Blood and Guts Patton? Bladder and Bowels, Brock. Yeah, the bashful butcher. You're going back to school. Why? I got a picture of myself addressing a jury from my kitty car. Why not? Don't be a fool. You might win a lot of cases that way. Education department, let's get on the ball here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good day, Dr. Fine. You look terrible. Same to you. 
Mr. Baker, I see, is out to lunch. He was out late last night celebrating his birthday. Where's Hamilton? Took off just before rounds. Really? Well, I want him in my office this afternoon. Yes, sir. Peekaboo, Mr. Baker. Well, I'm beginning to think a survey of the discipline in this ward might be of value. Don't tell me Newman had a pressing engagement elsewhere, too. It's a school, Doctor. You were the one who wanted him to get his diploma, remember? He can't be in two places at once. All right, Miss Robbins. Don't look so superior. You're not so smart, either. Hey, look, Anderson's got his crutches. You see that? You wait long enough, everything happens. Now, you're gonna have to work hard, George, but you got a low-level injury and you can do it. Has Bricker shown you the different ways you can ambulate? Yeah, it looks pretty hard, though. What do you mean? The swing two gate should be pretty easy for you. Watch. It's slow, but it gets you there. You see that? Why, you'll get onto it in no time at all. Still, it's hard. What? With your build? It's a cinch. It's good news tonight. Arise, Mr. Gunderson. Hark, hark, the lark at heaven's gate sings and Phoebe skins to... Sherman. Weaver, Robbins, you know anything about this? No, Doctor, I had no idea. He did go down to the movies the other night against orders. I didn't know about it till afterward. Mr. Gunderson, look at me. Listen, Doc, I... You listen to me. You know what you've done? Does it matter to you that this was a perfectly good bed saw closure a week ago and now it's completely broken down? It's a mess? It's not my fault. No, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's Dr. Weaver's fault or Miss Robbins. They should have tied you down to your bed so you couldn't disobey orders. What gives you the right to ruin good surgery by sheer indifference and carelessness? This patient is grounded for a month. All wheelchair privileges are withdrawn and all therapeutic measures will be done in bed. I'm sorry, Doc. I have nothing more to say to you. How are you today, Walter? All right. How's the hand? I don't know. Better, I guess. All right, let's see. Now, let's see you try to bend the fingers. Good. Good. Sherman Weaver, come here, look at this. Good, Walter. That's very, very good. Now, let's bear down on those resistive exercises. Let's keep them going. Attaboy. That's right, Max. 20 across the board. And you're in big trouble. Business as usual, I see, Mr. Doolin. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. What was your name, sir? When are you going to stop taking advantage of the government? What do you want me to do, walk? I had enough of that in the infantry. How is he? As usual. He won't go swimming or to the gym unless we drag him down. All right, drag him down, then. Here's my man. How's Tarzan today? Oh, fine, doctor. I saw your mother at the auxiliary meeting. I didn't see Dolores, though. Nah, that's a cute kid. Who asked for your opinion, the big wolf? Did you see the man from the bank? Those guys, they won't even talk to me until I get discharged. Well, you'll get to know You'll have your house. Ricky tells me you're working a little too hard in the gym. Oh, I don't get tired, Doc. Take it easy. You waited this long for your house, you wait a little longer. Yeah, I guess you're right. Mr. Howard has been discharged. Oh, yes. That brings us to Mr. Fox in the bush. Any complaints today, Mr. Butler? Just a slight case of paralysis in both legs. Nothing serious, you understand. Everybody's a comedian around here. Let's do a blood chemistry on him. What for? It's my hobby. Don't you want to be rehabilitated? No. I don't want to be rehabilitated, readjusted, reconditioned, or re-anything. And if you don't mind, I don't want to take my proper place in society either. Does that make my position clear? Nevertheless, we'll do a blood chemistry on him. Thank you, Dr. Kildare. Hey, Doc. Come here a minute, will you? It's important. Look through the little hole and tell me what you see. Some doll, eh? You moron. You're no good. You're making more money now than you ever made in your life, and all you want to do is lie on your back and smoke cigars and bet on horses and look at naked women. You're impossible. It's a wonderful guy. You haven't been much help, but you're in pretty good shape. Much better than you deserve to be. Thanks. Your bed sores are practically healed, and your kidney condition would improve a lot if you exercised. You're a well man. Well, when do I leave? 
You could do it in a year. Maybe only six months. It'll depend on you. You mean in six months or a year, I could work my way into a wheelchair? That's what you mean, isn't it? Uh -huh. Well, that'd be wonderful. You've been a paraplegic for more than a year now. Don't you think it's time you accepted it? I accept it. I, I'm just a bad patient, that's all. I'm sorry I'm spoiling your record. What record? Oh, you mean all this is personal interest? Well, Doctor, I'm really touched. I'll get well real fast now. What is it you want, Mr. Wilshire? You want to die? It saved the taxpayers a lot of money. Very nice, sir. Oh, uh, I met someone who knows you the other day. A girl. She says her name is Ellen something or other. She says you're engaged. Look, you keep her out of here. You keep her away from me. Why? Don't you like her anymore? Are you through with me? All through. You keep her out of here. You keep her away from me. I don't want to see her. You hear me? I hear you. I think it's time we began to get a little tough with Wilczek. Let's begin by taking him off drugs. He's got a lot of pain. I know, but we've got to start sometime. Also, he's strong enough to be moved into a ward. Let's put him in with Lopez and those other boys. Yes, sir. Lopez ought to be good for him, and those bench jockeys will ride him till he's saddle sore. Let's do that. Hey, where's Brock? I want to see Brock. He'll be around one of these days. Look, look I want to see him right now. Who's coming in, can you tell? Oh, no, it can't be. We're getting a laughing boy. King Bubbles of the Happy Islands. Good day, gentlemen. I'm bringing you a playmate. You know, you're too good to us, Robbie. If you wasn't so sexy, you'd remind me of my mother. There you are, handsome. If there's anything you want, just buzz. You know how to buzz, don't you? If I do buzz, will you send somebody else? Be nice to Lieutenant Wilcheck, boys. He's not a well man. Is that all you were, Mac? Just a lieutenant? How come they put him in here with us generals? Ah, uh, lay off, Leo. Hello, Wilcheck. I'm Norm Butler. Welcome to the country club. I'm supposed to talk to all new men about the PVA, the Paralyzed Veterans of America. We've got seven chapters now, you know. Oh, sorry, I'm not a joiner. Hey, don't talk to Norm that way. He's a big wheel on the board. You might need him someday. I'm not trying to sell you anything for Look, uh, I told you, I don't want to join any clubs. Now, leave me alone, will you? Norm, can't you hear? Leave the lieutenant alone. Sure. I'll leave him alone. Certainly. If a man wants to be left alone, he's got a right to be left alone. Hey, Angel, I'd like to introduce you to the lieutenant, but he wants to be A-L-O-N-E. Ah, Leo. Don't mind him. He's a clown. Yeah, I'm a clown. Hey, Norm. Did you ever see that picture of the smiling lieutenant? In person. Hey, lieutenant, sir, whose side were you on? Don't, Leo. He wants to be left alone. Well, who's not leaving him alone? I think he should be left alone. The guy's a hero, ain't he? The hero is not fed on sweets. Daily, his own heart he eats. Oh, that's beautiful. Who wrote it? Emerson. Fine man. You know what, Norm? I'll bet you the lieutenant won the Silver Star. With Oak Leaf Clusters. And the Good Conduct Medal? With Oak Leaf Clusters. Honest? You know he should be left alone. The best his country can do for him is none too good. Yes, but you see, he doesn't want to be a paraplegic. He doesn't? That's funny. I wouldn't have missed being a paraplegic for anything. Besides, sooner or later, everybody walks. I read it in the papers. Why don't you give the guy a break? He's got pain. No fooling. Gee, that's tough. You know, I never had any pain. Did you, Norm? Never. Did you, Angel? Why don't you throw rocks at him? Oh, you're too dumb to have any pain. Only smart people like the lieutenant have pain. Oh, you want to turn your radio down? Eh? All right, you're a very funny guy. Now, turn it down. Eh? The lieutenant would like you to turn your radio down. What's that? Turn it upside down. Well, that's crazy, man. Is that an order, Lieutenant, sir? Your Highness, sir? I don't think so. He just thinks it's a little too loud. Well, I can't hear it now. Besides, I got big money riding on the fourth at Hialeah. Turn it down! What's the matter, Lieutenant? You paralyzed or something? Come on over here and turn it down yourself.
captain, Lieutenant. And I'm ordering you to cool off. Soda? No, thanks. How's Ken? All right. When I got your message, I came right over. I, I was hoping... Yes, I know. Tell me, how long did you know Ken before he went into the Army? It wasn't a wartime romance, if that's what you're driving at. We met in our first year at college. What was he like in those days? Naturally, I'm prejudiced. Naturally. He was quite an athlete. A very good football player. I had a lot of competition. Would you say he was self-centered, a strong ego? No. He was an orphan. He'd been on his own a long time. And the kids did make a fuss over him. With me, he'd always want to be boss. And I let him think he was. But he's very, very nice, honestly. Have you told him about me? Yes. He doesn't want to see you. But you're going to help me, aren't you? I'm going to arrange for you to see him. But I'm not doing it to help you. I hope it'll help him. That's fair enough. Right. You know, I have a feeling you don't like me very much. Why? Well, that isn't so. I don't even know you. You seem to be a very nice girl. But you could turn out to be very bad for you. How? Well, for instance, if you're going into this because you're sorry for him. Don't you think I'm the best judge of my own emotions? Possibly. Hi, Doc. Uh, you see, men like Ken with drive, ambition, high hopes, usually find it hard to make an adjustment. And he's no exception. But I don't think you realize that you've got an adjustment to make, too. Maybe I already have. Have you? I've got a hunch about you. I've got a feeling that down deep you're hoping for a miracle, some piece of magic that'll restore this man to you as he was. Is it wrong to hope? There's a motto on the wall of my office. It goes like this. Please, God, give us the strength to do the impossible. But give us the courage to recognize what is really impossible. And above all, give us the wisdom to distinguish between them. May I see him now? No. Come to my office tomorrow night about 8. There's a wedding. He'll be alone in the ward. Thank you. you get in here? Dr. Brock arranged it. Don't look at me. What do you want? What you come here for? I told you I didn't want you around. I told you I didn't want anything to do with you. Can't you understand English, you stupid idiot? Oh, but, darling, please. But, darling, please, start walking. No. All right, I'll get you out of here. Will you get out? All right, I'll give you what you want. You want to see what it's like? All right, look. I said, look at me. Now, get a good look at me. Does it make you feel healthy? Is that what you want? OK, you can go home now. I'm not going home, bud. I'm staying with you. Who asked you to pity me? Why'd you have to come? Why didn't you listen? I listened to you once. 
I should have made you marry me before you went away. Ellie, go away, please. What is it with you? Don't you see it's all over? I told you, I told you, why not? Oh, we could make it. We still love each other. That hasn't changed. Ellen, you don't know pity from love, honey, and you don't owe me anything. Well, you owe me something. I've waited four years. I followed you from one hospital to another. Oh, Bud, we could really make it. I worked all through the war. I'm working now. Honey, what would I be doing? I go back to school on an athletic scholarship. I get a job weaving baskets. What do you want to do? Wait on me hand and foot all your life? I'm like a baby. You could build yourself up. Others do. You could try. You might even walk again if you tried. There's no hope. The wires are cut. All right. But you could get better. You could do lots of things. Oh, please. Please try. Don't you see? I need you. There'll never be anyone else. Oh, darling, don't you want us to be happy? Sure, I want us to be happy, honey, but I don't know. I don't know. It's a very nice wedding. Well, I'll tell you, with her being a nurse and all, I think they got a pretty good chance. It ain't as if she didn't know the score. Yeah, she's doing all right. Instead of taking care of a whole ward for 280 bucks a month, she's got one patient for 360. The government gives him a transportation allowance, so she's got a car. The government pays for half a house, so she's got a home. It's not bad. She's a nice girl, Norm. She didn't marry him for his compensation. It's doomed. What do you mean, doomed? Leo, my boy, it's not in the nature of the normal woman to be in love with one of us. This is sad, but true, and we should face it. That's what I mean by doomed. Don't you think it depends on the people? It's not in the cards. Normal is normal and crippled is crippled, and never the twain shall meet. Who said that? I did. The fact of the matter is, we make other people uncomfortable. You know why? Because we remind them that their own bodies can be broken, just like that, and they don't like it. You were married once, weren't you, Norm? <clears throat> yes. Well, she's a nice girl and pretty smart. I think they've got a chance. What are you arguing with them for? What do you know, dumbhead? Go to sleep. Come on, slow motion. Hit the linoleum. Not me. I dreamed I was running after streetcars all night. I gotta stay in bed and rest up. Don't disturb him today. He's readjusting. He's been readjusting for three years.
Where'd you think you were going? Out of the cigar store. You better start with cigarettes. Call you Tarzan. Yeah. What do you work so hard for? I got to. I gotta get out of here. I wanna get a home. Why, are you getting married? Nah, I'll never get married. See, I got six little brothers and sisters. My mother, she's getting pretty old. That makes me the papa now. You don't need a house, you need a hotel. <laughs> yeah. See, where they live now, it's not so good. My kid sister, she's 16. A girl like that, she's got to have her own room. And a nice place so she can have company. I'll be on the street all the time. You know. Yeah, sure. Well, let's go, Papa. It's got to mean only one thing. He's got a girl. No, it's just the summer's coming. I used to do the same thing to my dog. I'm telling you, he's got a girl. All right, gentlemen, and I use the term loosely, I'll satisfy this vulgar craving for gossip. Yes, I expect a visitor, a lady. The subject is now closed. I was the one who said it, but I don't believe it. Look, Donald Duck, I got just one thing to say to you. When she gets here, I don't want any whistling, sighing, ogling, or anything else that you consider wit and humor. In other words, behave. Because if you don't, 
abnormal, boy. This sounds serious. Maybe it is. But what about... You said... I said what? Skip it. catch before you came in. Why? Come here and sit down. I'm not sure I will. Don't think I like your tone. Well, if you're not going to sit down, I'm not going to tell you. Tell me why. Come on, sit down. Well? Well, don't get excited or anything. Who's excited? Okay, I think I'm getting returned. I'm starting to feel things. I think my legs are coming back. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. That's why I came out here. I didn't want to tell you in front of the others. Have you told anyone? Weaver, he's going to tell Brock. Oh, but that's wonderful. I knew it. I always knew it. Well, if I'm right, there won't be any more of these darn spasms. Gotta be right. Pues cómo están en la casa? Todos bien. Juanito está tan grande y todo el tiempo está llorando que quiere venir conmigo. Pues tráigalo. Dolores, Dolores. Aren't you gonna talk to me today, Dolores? Hey, Angel. Yeah. Ask your mother if I can marry Dolores when she grows up. Pregunta si puede casar Dolores cuando ella crezca. Dile que hombres que les gustan los caballos no hacen buenos esposos. Oh. She says men who love horses don't make good husbands. I don't love them. I just take a scientific interest in them. Pero es buen muchacho. Uh, she says you're a good boy, but then she doesn't know you like I do. Yeah, well, you tell her you're the laziest joker in the whole war. He is not, you are. Ah, what do you know, chicken? Hiya, Pop. Hello, Leo. How are you feeling? Okay. How's Ma? Not so good again. That's why she couldn't come. How are they treating you, boy? Can't complain. Oh. Here you are, Pop. Thanks, boy. I'll get a little present for your mother. Yeah, do that. You're coming along all right, aren't you? Look, Pop, you don't have to hang around. Well, I got a couple of things to do. I gotta see a fella about a deal. Yeah, lay off the long shots, Pop. You haven't got the knack. Take care of yourself, boy. Thanks. So long, Pop. Did Normie tell you about last night? Did he tell you how he clean fell out of his chair? Oh, was he a scream? And did I have a head this morning, please? Anyway, that's when I got him to promise to get rid of the muff. Oh, what's a beard? If I could grow dollars as fast as I grow hair, I'd be an international banker. Oh, Norby, you kill me. You know, some of the kids that drive in thought I was goofy at first. But I said, what's the difference? He's cute, and he's real educated. And what a sense of humor. And that car of his is really something. Yeah, it's nice. My, this sure is a big hospital, isn't it? <laughs> you know, Normie took me on the 20 cent tour. Honestly, I've got corns on my feet from walking. You're not tired, are you, hon? No, I'm fine. Well, you gotta take care of yourself, hon. Yeah, I know. Watches over me like a probationary nurse. Say, what time is it anyway? Oh, my, I've got to get back to the drive in. I'd better go now, Normie. I'll take you to the gate, Laverne. Okie dokie. Gee, I'm glad we got to know each other. We got a lot in common. Yes, we have. Well, goodbye, you all. Laverne, it's a pretty name. Well... What's the matter? Hey, Jughead. What's the matter? 
I'm sick. Sick to my stomach. See that neck? See how rigid? Temperature's 103 now. All the classic signs. Get him into a private room right away. Get ready for a spinal tap. Call neurosurgery. Well? You can see for yourself. Shall we try another transfusion? Try. Out of a clear sky. Are you sure? Yes. I like that boy. You ought to get some rest. Have grand rounds in exactly three hours. Yes, I know. shell fragment in the soft tissue near his spine. Never bothered him? No point in messing with it. It started to abscess. It reached his spinal canal. Meningitis. Nobody's fault. It just happened. We did everything. Anything new? No, sir. Good morning. Dr. Weaver tells me you think you're getting a return. Well, let it go, Doc, some other time. No. Pin, please. Now, tell me what you feel. The point or the round end? Say sharp or dull. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. 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 Look here, Ken. I just jabbed that pin into your calf. You didn't feel it, did you? Look, Ken. The legs are gone. Now the head has to take over. I know what it means to you. Forget it. Before you can change the world, you have to accept it as it really is, without illusions. You understand that, don't you? You've been doing fine. Good reports from the gym. Keep it up. And go out more often. Be with people. You remember we discussed trying another pudendal block on Mr. Butler? Seems like a good idea. Why bother? There's no need for insolence. Well, come now, doctor. Precisely. I am the doctor here. And I'm sick and tired of this attitude of doing me a favor by allowing me to keep you alive. What do you men think this is? A country club? It's a hospital. 
We're not magicians here. We're only doctors. We do the best we can. And you can either develop a sense of responsibility about yourselves or you can get out. All of you. Please. No, we'll wait our turn, thank you. But I have a table, sir. Just follow me. Like you always when so many. Just take it away. Why don't we go to the pump room where people know us? We can't always go where people know us. Look at him. Look at him staring at us. Come on, let's get out of here. Better take me back to the hospital. I'm not very good company tonight. No, you're not. But it's all right. I know you've got Angel on your mind. I got him on my mind, all right. He was a wonderful boy, but brooding won't help. No, nothing helps. He was the best patient in the ward. He worked harder than anybody. He wanted a house so bad. It wasn't anyone's fault, but. That's right, but if he was normal, he'd have had a chance. You try and you try and you're still behind the eight ball. Take Norm, he's a brilliant guy. He graduated with every honor they had around. And he kids himself into thinking that that cheap blue. Oh, well. You've talked about everybody but us. I know it. I've been trying to work up to it. I've been kidding myself about getting return. Rock set me straight this morning. on it, too. But it doesn't change anything. Doesn't it? I think it does for you. If you can live with it, it's not that important to me. Ellie... No, but I won't listen. You don't have to play it this way, Ellie. You've done enough for me. Then how about doing something for me? You've taken up six years of my life. When are you going to make an honest woman of me? Very funny. Yes, isn't it? You worry a lot about being fair to me. I wish you'd quit worrying and start being fair. All right, we've had a disappointment. I say we go ahead and set a date and get married on that date the way other people do. We're not the same as other people. Only in your mind. I'm not marrying a wheelchair. I'm marrying a man. Are you going to marry me or aren't you? Because for your information, if you are, I've got an awful lot of things to do. Clothes to buy. We'll have to get you a car you can drive. We'll need a house, furniture, dishes. And I've got to get home and tell my folks and be with them for a while. You make it sound real. Oh, Bud. You haven't told me you love me in an awful long time. I miss it. It doesn't embarrass me to say it. I love you.
Well, where have you been all this time? I had a date with Laverne. The corporal's getting married. Getting married? Well, that's nice. Did you know I've been planning on getting married, too? Did I tell you I had a date with Laverne tonight? I did. Only she didn't show up. Maybe you got your wires crossed. Yeah. I got them crossed, all right. Of all people, me, the wise guy, the spectator on the scene of life. And how stupid can you be and still be alive? Don't you think you're going off half cock because she didn't show up once? Oh, very good question. Very good indeed. I like your style, young man. What's more, I'll give you the answer. Do you know why Vernie didn't show up tonight? Because she's in Canada. Do you know how much she took me for? Nine hundred bucks. Don't you think that's kind of funny? Go to sleep, Norm. Sleep on. Just sleep. Just sleep. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. That's by William Shakespeare, a very nice man. Wish you luck. We both do, of course. Oh, yes, dear. You don't sound very happy about it, either of you. You don't like the idea, do you? We haven't said so. No, but it's pretty obvious. Even if that's true, it's not important. It's your life, Elle. You're not a baby anymore. No, I'm not a baby. And it is my life. But I'm disappointed in you, in both of you. You're taking it like just anyone would, as if you didn't understand. You think I'm a silly young girl who doesn't know the difference between pity and love. You could at least be honest about it. If honesty is what you want, I think you're making a big mistake. Is that what you think, too? What you mean is that I ought to be very cold and practical about this. That even though Bud and I love each other, I ought to break it off and find a... That's one way of putting it. Not necessarily the fair way. Look, Ellie, I like Bud. I like him a lot. I always have. I'd be proud to have him for a son. I mean that. But the point is, things are different now. Yes, I know, through no fault of his. But he's different, too. He's not the same man. To me, he is. I love him. You love him. Love can be very fragile, Elle. Even healthy people can't always hold on to it or take it for granted. I'm telling you this for his good as well as yours. How long do you think that love is going to last after you realize you've signed a contract to be his nurse the rest of your life? It won't work. You're a young, healthy girl. It doesn't have to be that way. There's hope. So you're going to live on hope. Oh, I'm not blaming you. I know you love him. I'd probably be ashamed of you if you felt any other way. Actually, I blame Bud. Yes, I do. He knows the score better than any of us. He ought to let you go. If he loved you as much as you love him, he'd make you go. You're being so clever, so logical. I never knew you could handle words so well. That's not an answer, Elle. You weren't quite so logical a few years ago when we needed some boys to go out and get killed. We're paralyzed. That's enough, Ellie. I can't let you talk to your father like that. It's not fair. Because he's not cold or selfish. He's done more for boys who are in the army and have had trouble. Harriet, please. Well, you have. Harriet, that's not the point. I don't care. 
I can't allow Ellie to talk to you like that. Ellie, I haven't said anything because it's so hard. But you're all we have. Baby, is it so wrong for us to want a grandchild? I'm going to marry Bud. I'm sorry. I don't know. I just don't know. Why don't you know? You're his doctor. Who else is there? We're still learning. I've told you that before. Would you like to see the results of our research in fertility? I'll save you time. Some paraplegics are capable of having children, others aren't. We don't always know why. In Ken's case... In his case? That isn't very probable, but it is within the realm of possibility. I don't think... I'd rather say I don't know. It's pretty late in the day for this sort of thing. No, it isn't. Because it really doesn't matter. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. What are you trying to do? Walk out of here? Oh. But I'm going to be married standing up. beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the presence of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, an honorable estate, and therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly. Into this holy estate come now these two persons present, 
to be joined together. If any man can show just cause why they may not be joined together, let him speak now, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. The bride and groom will join hands. completely happy with the drapes. But the material's good. Uh-huh. Do you like the lamps? Sure. Yep. I got the biggest ashtrays I could find. I hate those little things that are always dipping over. He's down on wheels tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, what, we got a family of them already? They say no home's complete without one. Boy. Hey, hey, what'd you put these in here for? Those are all those pictures I've had for years. I thought... I'm sorry, I... I suppose it was stupid of me. I didn't no, think. No, that's all right. I'll take them out tomorrow. Uh, it's all right. I mean, forget it, honey. It doesn't bother me. I was just surprised, that's all. Leo sent us a b bottle of champagne. Shall we open it now? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll get it. Glasses. Yes, I know. <laughs> Such a big bottle, we'll never finish it. Maybe we should call Leo. Yeah, he probably had that in mind. I don't know how they expect you to open these things. Darn wires go every which way. Let me have it. My carpet. Oh, I hope it won't stain. I heard somewhere that cold water would... What's the matter? Nothing. I'll get some water. What are you looking at? You've seen this before. I'm sorry. I don't like the way you're looking at me, Ellie. I said I was sorry. Yeah, I know, but what are you sorry for? I don't know. Stop putting me on trial. You pick at me so I can't think. Wait a minute, what are you thinking? Are you thinking you made a mistake? Is that it? You're sorry, aren't you? You're sorry, aren't you? What do you want me to say? All right, I am. Why did you have to wait till we were married?
slowly, both boys feeling the pace. It's been a very fast fight so far, very even as far as I can see. Matt comes in fast now with a left to the head. He glances off, didn't do very much damage. Jenkins jabs with a left and brings over a right cross. And a fast left and right by Jenkins. I think Pyle is hurt. And he's holding on now. Jenkins is trying to measure it. Pyle throws a left jab that goes wild to the mark, but he scores with the right under the heart. But what are you looking at? on what you like best, people or horses. With me, it's horses. Someday I'm gonna have a whole stable full of them. You boys are vets, I take it. No, we're just up from Atlantic City and we brought our chairs along. Ah, oh, no, you're not, eh? <laughs> that's a great little sense of humor you got there. You know, that's a great characteristic of the American soldier. God bless Mrs. sense of humor. I'm a vet myself. The other war, of course. What other war? You know, the first one, 1918. Oh, the big one. Well, <laughs> you're quite a kid, aren't you? <laughs> but seriously, boys, I want to tell you something. I admire I admire the both of you. Boys like you, after what you've been through, I say the best is none too good for you. Is that what you say? Yes, sir. That's what he says. You say it all the time? Well, sure. God bless you, mister. Oh, I mean it. You boys have made a great sacrifice. Tell me something. Uh, could I marry your daughter? Oh, I haven't got a daughter. Well, could I marry her? Well, I... All right, keep her. Who wants the old crow? Okay, boys, I can take a hint. These days, every punk that got run over in a blackout's a big hero, but that's okay. No hard feelings here. Buy yourselves a drink. Hey, buddy. Uh, buddy, come here a minute, will you? Look, uh, I want to apologize to you. Hey, what's the matter, boys? Okay, we're leaving, we're leaving. Come on, slugger. Hey, champ, come in for a landing, will you? What's the matter? Are you worried? Me? No, I just bruise easy, that's all. Hey, look out! Congratulations. Very nice for the hospital, of course. Wonderful publicity. I know. I don't like it any more than you do. Look, Gene, it isn't a matter of liking it. I'm the one who's going to have Washington breathing down his neck. I know. How am I going to explain it? Here's a man who's been nothing but trouble since he's been back. Consequently, he's restricted to the post. He sneaks out, get fighting drunk, and... Question, what kind of a hospital am I running here? It isn't very pleasant for you. The point is, what is he doing here anyway? He's married, isn't he? He's got a home. He isn't sick. He's had maximum physical benefits. Medically, yes. Psychologically, he could use some help. Gene, let's be realistic. How many normal people are there in the world? I want you to discharge him. I can't do that, Dr. Cameron. What do you mean, you can't do that? He's going up before the PVA disciplinary board. I don't intend to intervene. That's nonsense. This has nothing to do with the Paralyzed Veterans Association. This is a hospital matter. I don't quite agree with you. Oh, Gene, let's be sensible. You've done wonderful work with those men, but he's one of them. They'll be easy with him, you know that. I can't agree with that either. This is too important to let the men decide for themselves. Doctor, you admit that they've done a good job, that they've been practically self-governing. And just because it is important, I can't very well take it out of their hands. Just as I can't go over their heads, whatever they decide. You see that, don't you? If this thing gets out of hand, I may not be able to protect you. I hope you're prepared to take the consequences. I am. So I said to her, hey, Robbie, when are you going to marry Brock? And she hits me. 
Boy, did she give me a crack. Gin. 26. He can't play the game. He just talks you out of it. Next game. Next player. Hello. Hi, I thought you went home. No, I, I've been around. I read about you in the paper. I thought maybe you were hurt or something. No, I'm all right. I'd like to talk to you, bud. Okay. No, stick around. Ellie and I don't have any secrets. What's on your mind, Elle? All right, bud. We better be going, huh? Stay. Uh, these are my friends, Ellie. They know all about us. I came here to tell you I'm sorry. You see, at first I was very sure of myself. Then I started to get confused and afraid. And that night, the way everything... Forget it. It doesn't matter anymore. But it does matter, bud. I've had a chance to see things the way they really are. The important thing is to know what you're willing to settle for. To be really sure. I'm sure now. I want you. I want you to come home. I'm home. This is my home. This is where I belong. Oh, please. You go home. Go far away from me. Pretend it never happened and we'll both be better off. Let's go to Chow. I don't feel bad. You won't even have any scars. Well, we can restrict him to the hospital for 60 days, or we can vote for discharge. It's up to us. From what I hear, this guy's been in trouble right along. I say kick him out. For what? For being AWOL? 60 days restriction is plenty. We're not responsible for what the guy does on the outside. That's what I say. Suppose he kills but somebody. But he did. Look, that's up to the cops. They didn't put him in jail, and we can't. We can only try for breaking hospital rules, for being AWOL. That's all we know about officially. Officially, my eye. We're not the police department. Listen, the cops brought him in here so the hospital could handle it. And that means us. Otherwise, he'd be in jail right now. So he's lucky. All right, he's lucky. But we're supposed to be a disciplinary board or something. And I know that if we go easy on him, we're not kidding anybody but ourselves. Listen, people always remember these wheelchairs. Don't ever forget that. Guys like him just make it tough on the rest of us. What's he doing here anyway? He's well, isn't he? He's married. He's got himself a home. Why isn't he living in it? Maybe he's had trouble. Let him patch it up. Listen, anybody that's married is going to have trouble. You know, huh? You can say that again. But if he's got things on his mind, are we going to help him any by kicking him out? You're not helping him any by being easy on him. He'll just make more trouble for himself and everybody else. I still think 60 days is tough enough. Well, let's vote on it. All in favor of discharge, raise your hands. All against? Norm? Discharge. You voted to kick me out? Well, you're a nice bunch of fellas. Who do you think you are? What makes you think you can do it? This is a veteran's hospital, and you're nobody. You're nothing. You see, and we'll just see what Brock has to say about it. Something. I want you to know I voted for discharge. Thanks. I want you to know Don't why. Don't bother, friend. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Well, it kicked me out. Yes, I know. Well, well, that's crazy, isn't it? Do you think so? What's the matter with everybody around here? What do you mean, do I think so? Listen, you're my doctor, and you're going to keep me here. I'm not going to overrule the board. Oh, I get it. It's easier for you that way, isn't it? Yes, but it's better for you. You're well, Kent. Well, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Into the world. I can't go out there anymore. You still can't accept it, can you? No. What did I do? Why did it have to be me? Is there an answer? I haven't got it. Somebody always gets hurt in a war. Look, Ken, you're a married man. You've got a home. That's where you ought to be. 
I haven't got anything. What happened? Why did you run away? Nothing happened. She couldn't take it, that's why. She, she looked at me like I was a bug. You want what everyone wants. Peace of mind. And it's pretty hard sometimes to accept the truth instead. Even though that's where real peace of mind lies. And the truth is that you are what you are. The truth is that your wife is a human being with all the weakness and all the strength that human beings have. Yeah, it's easy for you to talk. Oh, yes, I know. It's easy for me to talk. I know. I can walk out of here when the day is over, and I've got a good job. Only I can never see a patient walk out of here, never. I can keep a man alive, but in his heart he feels I've failed him. You feel that way, don't you? Took me a long time to get used to that. Peace of mind. Why didn't you leave me alone in the beginning? Why'd you have to come around here and make me think we could make it? Suppose it were just the opposite. Suppose you were on your feet and she were in the chair. Would you have come around? Well, I don't know. Shall I tell you something? I was married once. On our third anniversary, we... we were in an accident. Paraplegia was a new field then. At least she didn't have to suffer too long. That was 18 years ago. And I'd give anything I've got to know that when I go home, I'd find her there waiting for me. In a wheelchair. I'm due at a meeting. I think you ought to go back to your wife, Ken, if she'll take you. I can't guarantee that she won't ever look at you like that again. But if she loves you and if you behave, the chances are she won't. Anyway, you've got a lot of living ahead of you. And nobody can do it for you but you. Hello, Ellie. You've come a long way. Yeah. I had a flat tire. I fixed it myself. Good for you. Are you doing anything tonight? No. Would you like to go to a movie or something or talk? Yes, I would. Do you want me to help you up the steps? Please. 